This is the last Sunday of Advent. And the word for tonight is love. I remember when I was a pastor doing a lot of weddings. During the wedding ceremony, I would look at the couple and say something like, for better, for worse, in richer, poor, in sickness and in health. I would think to myself, you're really not talking to them. You're talking to yourself. This young couple on the cusp of their marriage, not thinking anything about the fact that love has its challenges. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. I want to talk about the fact that love cost. I guess I'm inspired by Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the Lutheran minister who was killed by the Nazis. In his book, he wrote, one of his books, he wrote about cheap grace and costly grace. Bonhoeffer said, for you and me to know the grace of God in our lives, the unconditional love of God, we have to understand it means taking our lives out of our own hands and putting those lives into God's hands. Bonhoeffer knew that grace, as precious and powerful as it is, costs something. And love costs something. I remember a young couple, they had their first child. A few years after the child was born, diagnosed with a degenerative condition. They weren't thinking about sending their child to school because their child wouldn't live that long according to the doctors. They weren't thinking about a prom dress. They weren't thinking about the wedding of this daughter. They were thinking about the moments that they had with her. I never will forget when the mother turned to me when I was visiting in the hospital and she said, do you know this child is a special gift to us? The gift of God's grace. How do we respond to that gift? The love of God. How do you and I respond? Because love cost. I'm thinking about an older couple that I know. They're at the stage of life when they have to help each other around. And yet, every time that I'm with them, I'm amazed by their love for each other. Love cost. A young woman by the name of Mary. One day, an angel by the name of Gabriel came to her and said, you found favor with God. You are going to give birth to the child of God. She had some questions of the angel. But finally, she said, may it be to me as you have said. It's no wonder that this young woman named Mary went for three months a long trip to see her cousin Elizabeth. Elizabeth giving birth to a child in her old age, Mary 
giving birth to a child too soon. But both had been visited by angels and they understood. But think about Mary when she finally had to come home to Nazareth, telling her friends and family, telling Joseph, I'm thinking about a young woman named Mary because love really costs. I'm thinking about a man by the name of Joseph. His story is told in the Gospel of Matthew. Joseph was probably older than Mary, maybe even much older than Mary. Marriages in that day were arranged by the parents. In other words, you didn't look across if they had fellowship halls in the synagogue in Nazareth and Joseph looked at Mary and said, that's the person I want to marry. Mom and dad arranged the weddings. A period of 12 months where they were engaged. They had no relations with each other, but it was understood that neither one was to have relationships, intimate relationships with anybody else. But Mary was having a child. Joseph was a righteous man. The Hebrew word is Sadiq. Sadiq, Joseph knew the law. Joseph followed the law. The law said that if your wife to be becomes pregnant, then you put her away. Joseph was gentle about it. He was going to put her away just privately. But an angel came to Joseph and said, Joseph, the child inside of Mary is more God than you can ever imagine. I'm thinking of Joseph because he took Mary as his wife. What did people say? Love cost. I'm thinking of the baby. Joseph was the one who named the baby in the Gospel of Matthew. You shall call him Jesus. The Hebrew word for Jesus is Joshua. He will save their people from their sins. Think about that. Jesus will grow up to go out to people who really feel that they're already righteous. Pharisees, Sadducees, following the law. And what does Jesus do? I've really come to save you from their sins. I've come to take your sins away. These people thought they had no sins. They knew the law, they obeyed that the earthly life of Jesus ended in such a tragic way. People have a hard time being told that they have sinned and need to be saved. I'm thinking about you and me. Love really does cost. I know that there is a great deal of celebration at this time of the year. And the last thing I wanna do is to pull 
clouds over anybody's sunny sky. That's not the point. But I am thinking about you and me. Because if we have come this far in the journey of Advent, and we don't realize that love costs everything, then I really don't think we have made the journey. Love cost. We hold on to hope and the love of God holds on to us. It costs everything. But as far as I'm concerned, it's worth everything.